Well, welcome to another Gibbs Adventures. We're in Bethel, Maine at Olson's Trapper's Weekend. Here for a couple of days, Gary and I, my buddy Gary. We're, camp camp we're camping here. Good thing we brought a little tent because it's rainy. But there's already a couple uh, couple hundred people camped out here in the field. Pretty cool. Some people were partying last night and their tent fell down, so there you go. But uh, this is a great weekend. I've been coming here for years and years. I've missed the last three, but I'm back this year and I'm going to enjoy myself. Started rate was great. We set up, got here at 8 o'clock just before it got dark, set up, and now it's raining. So good thing we got our little canopy set up. We're having a, we're having a little coffee, a little bit of honey with our coffee. Oh, Gary's waiting for another one. Uh, we have a lot of most of these morning, only one left. I didn't plant it though. I know the food was set. There's a reason why I didn't. You get a lot of this. So what if you get a little bit? Okay, what, I want a little bit. What if you get a little bit? Okay, I get that. If you've never caught it there, catch one. Okay, that's exciting. 1.7 hours. You don't have very many hecklers when you do a demo. Yeah, I know we're here. And usually it's the guys that you know and your friends. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is a really versatile piece of equipment. I can just, I use a clip to hold my trap on, and I can set it in seconds. If the water's deep enough, a lot of times and someone's not doing the same thing, no one even knows you're there. You can set it in as deep waters. You can even take a, a pole. I think Jerry LeBeau had a, a, a 10 placing stick at one time. And this is his take on the stand. He is selling these, and it's really a versatile. It can be fired to a tree for a set. It can be used in a number of different ways. But it just goes to show you how inventive trappers are. If you, have, if you think you have a million dollar idea, and you're going to patent it and, and uh, get trappers to buy it, you're just dreaming because they won't they won't buy a dozen they'll want to buy one it's like what I was telling you <laughs> I was one of the first guys to, to test these stabilizers they're a great invention well I was selling them at my table so you know, guys come up there you know trackers are pretty thrifty I won't say cheap but they're thrifty <laughs> and it was like 18 bucks a dozen and one guy you know it's like I'm standing right here they're right there we're looking at it. Some guys even come up with a tape measure, a measure. <laughs> One guy, I, he goes, how much are they? He said, 18 bucks a dozen. And he's looking at it, and he's a partner, he goes, I don't know if you can make it. He's like, hey man, don't stand it right here. <laughs> He goes, well, how much is one? I said, twenty-four dollars. <laughs> An hour or more that they would get organ damage. They actually had a few people die as a result of this. So they went to a, a better anesthesia, okay? But it works. It's safe. I buy it by the metal tin, and I pour it in one of in sixteen ounce. checking out some tailgaters there's always a bunch of tailgaters show up to this event and it's, gr it's a great time you never know what you're gonna find here
You sure that big, Gary? Yeah, boys did ever. Kind of the last refuge for free trappers in Maine because of all the regulations that have forced the way we trap for martin fisher, coyotes, any land animals. So this is the last thing that you can actually do and you can get creative. You can try different things. You know, we martin trap now, we got a box you gotta use. That's what you do. You use the box. You can get creative, oh, we'll put it up on the tree, we'll you know put it over here, try different lures and baits. But you, we've been boxed into that. Coyote trapping, you get a certain type of trap you gotta use. Now, beer trapping, we can pretty much do anything through the ice. There's no check law, so guys, you got, you got a family, you can go on the weekends, on a Sunday afternoon, you can go set up, you can check a week later. You don't have to worry about, uh, about busting up and getting after all your traps all the time. Um, we can use snares, which I'll show you here. Uh, we can use the number 14 jumps, which is still a very effective beaver trap. Uh, we have a super long season where I'm at. Some zones we start in uh, the 15th of October and we go all the way through the end of April. And they're talking about extending that because some of our zones actually the end of April we still have ice and the beaver have to come out. Um, so, so a super long season just in general. You can get creative, you can try different things. I just have fun with it, you know. Um, the pelt's not worth much, so just you might as well enjoy yourself. in the morning, everybody's just starting to wake up. And there's Gary. Good morning. Halfway there, Gary. Hey, misty your day. A little bit. a great setup, a little canteen at the uh, convention grounds. You can get breakfast in the morning or lunch or supper in the, in the afternoon. So, great setup. Lining up for breakfast. Are you ready for breakfast? I am. Perfect. Thanks, Toast. Plenty of surface there. Up to the other hind leg. On the corn, I can start yanking a lot, but I'm not going to yank too much. I'm not going to get too, too over aggressive with it. You're going to use your knife carefully. Skin step back. It's the muscles basically around. The last thing a skunk wants to do is spray, honestly. They'll, hold, they'll give you all types of indication they're going to squirt, so you know. Now, the whole trick here is take a sharp knife, the skin back very carefully. That glands on each side of the rim. You can start to see it right there. See that right there is a gland. This side, same way, just very carefully.
See that gland right there? There's the other side of it. Now, I'm going to tell you an interesting story. This has nothing to do with skin and scalp. But we had a guy at home there, and a young chap. Well, he wasn't so young. He was, he was in his 20s. And one night he shows up in my first shed, and I'm trapping coon. I got quite a few coons yet. Just go easy, skin that. You can see that gland, all right? Just go easy. And uh, he shows up with a fisher. He says, oh, I got a fisher. And my shed's down at my parents' house. So my mom called me up and said, hey, Bob is here. He's got, he needs help. He's got a fisher. He wants you to help him skin it. Said, okay, I'll be down in a little while. I get down there, and Bob says, yeah, he said, yeah. And uh, we head out in the shed there, and he brings it in. I look at it. I go, oh, roadkill. Yeah, 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 roadkill. He says, oh. He says, now were you trapped? He said, I felt lucky I got it before you did. I said, oh, good, Bob. He said, well, I need you to, now, I've come, come to learn with Bob, me showing him how to do something was me doing it and him watching me work. Okay? <laughs> he's not yet, he's no kid, but he, you know, he was smart enough to figure out how to get somebody else to do his work sometimes. So I said, well, Bob, I got all kinds of, here's all these cool, I got to scrape these tonight. I says, you get going on it, and I'll, I'll walk you through it. And my, where I scrape is in the back of my shed. So Bob starts out and he's skinning down the legs and stuff. And, and he's got, he, I said, yeah, just cut it on the rim. And if you're going to be serious about removing skunk quill, get yourself this product called Skunk Off. It's made by Thornell uh, Laboratories and it's available usually from a veterinarian or you can Google it and get it from Amazon. Until I do this. Bob saw you here, but I got in a little bit because we got pretty successful. He came in there and we got talking. I ain't talking to him a lot. I told him about it. I'll tell you something, Russ. I'm sure that about it. I'm sure that about it. Yeah. He went and got that every day. Oh, he's yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 Morning, Bill. Yeah. I'll put you on my YouTube channel. There you go. Bill's a good guy to buy stuff from. <laughs> Actually, I get quite a few I can. Yeah, right on. Yeah, they go to the old Lodge Beach and stuff, or they just, I mean, for some reason, concerts, whatever. And yeah. They look me up, and I make sure I'm at the shop. And Perfect. Works out good. Yeah, right on. Ones with teeth in like, oh, really going around and Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd love to have Gary Jepson come. Yeah, so it took me a year, you know, but I, I, I got Gary to, you know, he wanted to come and all of this and that. So I picked him up down in Connecticut at the airport and, and brought him up here. And yeah, he gave a, a cat demo and he gave a, a kayak demo. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's getting around. Um, That's yeah. good. Yeah. Well, he had some issues too. I think he had some prostate issues. He? Yeah, yeah, he, he had some. You know, well, he's that know, was around the time I had him. Seventies. Yeah, he's, you know, he's had some issues. But yeah, I guess he's doing okay. That was around the time, of the year I had, I had him and Tim and Corey Van Drew at Rapper right. right. College. Yep, yep, yep. And um, yeah, Gary, you remember that? Should I wave to Darcy? Hey, yeah, wave to Darcy. Hey, Darcy, wish you were here. <laughs> Great <laughs> on. You ready? No, hold on. Ready, Ralphie? Go! You can dump them out. Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on,
Yeah. Well, I, 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 I know guys that are the control. That's it, make another one. So we're taking off, Newton. So Gary and I are just loading up. We're leaving. It's Saturday uh, around noon. It's supposed to rain like a bugger, so we're, we're going to bail a bit early. But you can see the place is full. Cars all loaded up. Out of blast. Here we are, Gary and I crossing the border, going back into Canada from the U.S. in some little border crossing in Quebec somewhere. Well, I hope you enjoyed this segment of Gibbs Adventures, a little trip, a side trip this summer to uh, Bethel, Maine to see Olsons. I highly recommend it to any trapper that's ever thought about going. Take the time to go. It's a great time. 500 trappers show up to swap tails. You can't have more fun than that. Take care. See you in the next video. What is this place? Hereford, Quebec? Yeah, it looks like Hereford Road. One of the old buildings there, right? Yeah. Right, right on the, the line, because there's the sign that says United States.